Hello and welcome back to another GTN Coaches Corner. Use the hashtag GTN Coaches Corner to send in your trash on training or racing related questions and we will answer them for you or specifically today I'll answer them for you. Yeah, drop them in the comment section down below this video or below any video and we'll snap them up and answer them in future episodes. So today we're going to be looking at why we're focusing on running form. It might make certain muscles sore why it may spike your heart rate, whether you should be using power on the bike, whether you should be using aero bars during an FTP test, and whether you should be using normalized power or average power when on the bike. Pretty good questions. I'm excited to get into this one. So first one from Peter Hawking Music said, I've been trying to improve my running form for a few months and had some good results. Not only am I getting faster, but I now have very little post-run soreness in my feet, ankles, calves and quads. But now I have quite a bit of soreness in my hamstrings and glutes that I didn't have before. Is that to be expected or should I see this as a warning sign? Well, firstly, Peter, great job on firstly focusing on your running form. That's something a lot of people don't dedicate and devote time to and it sounds like you're making some good progress so again well done on that front. Uh, totally understand your concern about the shifting or movement of that soreness from your feet and ankles calves up to sort of hamstrings and glutes. I would actually suggest that this is a positive rather than a negative. So you are starting to use some strong muscles further up the chain that are actually fantastic for stabilizing um, and you should probably see some good results off the back of that. Also, you're seeing soreness at the moment probably because those muscles aren't used to working so they're just building up strength. But once they have done that, you're now distributing the workload across greater uh, range of muscles that's going to improve your run efficiency and ultimately you'll find that you'll be able to run faster so I wouldn't see this as a negative necessarily at the moment but you're right in saying it is a somewhat of a warning sign because they're sore at the moment as I say they're trying to get stronger so you should listen to that to a degree and just gradually build things up allow them to adapt and get stronger before really overloading them but with time hopefully it'll all come together but just be smart in that progress to that. Next question from Ch -ch 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 -cha. <laughs> I think that's how we say it. Great username. Uh, so their question is, I'm new to running. I want to know what I should focus more on, running form technique or low heart rate running. Every time I try to do running form properly, it makes me run fast and my heart rate goes up. Another great question and um, congrats also for focusing on your running form, it's brilliant. Now, unfortunately, a bit like the previous question, it sounds like because you're focusing on your running form, you're probably starting to use more or even new muscles, and that is going to elevate the heart rate. So with that, I would say when it comes to easier runs versus doing technique work, yes, you're right in probably trying to separate those out. And when you do want to do an easy run, really do just go out and run easy. It's not to say you completely forget about technique or form, but you make sure it's easy. And then you have devoted or dedicated sessions where you will focus on and think about your form and technique more. That could be built into some of your speed sessions or harder sessions. As you say, when you start to focus on run form, often your pace picks up because you are starting to use muscles and really thinking about your posture. Um, now, that is not to say that you should suddenly start running for 30, 40 minutes straight, focusing on your running form or technique. It is hard work. Again, looping back around on this, you're starting to use new muscles, they're going to fatigue and tire and probably your run form will start to fall apart. So a bit like we do with swimming, we suggest quite often it's like break it down. You might want to just do 30 seconds focusing on your run form and then stop, walk or just jog and then go again. And then over time, you should start to feel that you can run for minutes on end holding that form together. But again, if you start to feel it falling apart, stop, recover, collect yourself and then go again. Great question though. Our next one from Emma Duizend said, I want to do my first full Ironman in 2024 and a 70.3 in 2023. No ambitious goals, I just want to finish. I have a race bike, but no power meter. I am used to doing exercise by heart rate, for example, when running. However, my cycling friends all recommend I should start training with a power meter. Should I, or could I just do an Ironman by heart rate? Fantastic question, and actually we have a video coming up on the channel in the next couple of weeks that goes into quite a bit of detail on this. So I do suggest that you stay tuned for that one to come, but I'll try and do my best to answer this quite succinctly and quickly here. So a power meter is fantastic. I use one. It's um, that kind of 
final output or measure of output at the pedals, whereas heart rate is that internal measure of your um, effort and it can be affected by stress, heat and various other factors. Now, where they differ and they have their pros and cons, obviously heart rate has somewhat of a lag to it. So if, for instance, we were running up a hill, we may not see the heart rate start to climb until we may be halfway up the hill. Whereas with power, we would immediately see the effects of that increased effort from literally the get-go at the bottom of the hill. So for something like road bike racing, road, road cycling, where there are constant spikes in power and they need to see that immediate and instantaneous reaction to the effort they're putting out, power is absolutely a go-to and I would fully recommend it to anyone doing road racing. However, in Ironman, we are looking to do steady state efforts and to be honest, trying to keep the pace as even as possible and we're not necessarily looking for big spikes in our heart rate or our power. So I would say absolutely you can get away with doing 70.3 or an Ironman using heart rate. However, I think you will probably find as time goes on, actually just the information that you can collect from using power and how specific you can get with it will be quite interesting. You may find actually you will eventually want to start looking into using power and you can actually combine the two. It's not simply a case of nudging heart rate aside and then using power. You probably want to start kind of bringing the two together and collectively working them together. So great question though. And as I said, stay tuned for a video coming up very soon. Um, next question, and in fact, it's two questions from um, Swissman4839. So uh, it said, I have a question about pacing an Ironman bike leg. Should I be aiming for 65 to 80% of my FTP on my road bike, or should I be doing the FTP test in the aero position on my TT bike and taking 65 to 85% of that? And it says in brackets, FTP tests are hard enough without having to be aero as well. Uh, yeah. They are, FTP tests are hard. And yes, um, as many of us know, getting the aero bars and doing efforts makes things just that little bit harder. Um, but I guess the answer to this question is you are gonna be racing in your aero bars. So yes, you want to be setting those zones and those numbers off of the position that you are planning to hold. Now, I, I'm gonna put a lot slight caveat in there. Now, early season or, or in the off season, if you are gonna be doing a majority of your training up, on the hoods, out of the aero bars, then fine, do it in, on a road bike, sat up position out of the aero bars, knowing that those zones you'll be setting the numbers off will be used in a road bike sat up position for a number of months. However, as you get into the season, I would fully recommend resetting those zones based on the power output in the aero bars. Teamed with that, I would also suggest that you do start trying to do as many efforts as possible in your aero bars. So actually that difference between hoods versus aero bars is as little as possible because you're getting more efficient and stronger at putting the power out in that aero position. I hope that makes sense. I've gone around a couple of circles there. But anyway, the next part of this question, they've gone on to say, also, should I be using normalized or average power as a target? Now I have had this question through a lot of times and I'm very excited that someone's asked it um, here on Coach's Corner. So the difference between the two, in case you're not aware, is normalized power is almost that um, physiological impact of or cost of a ride. Whereas your average power is literally just the average power across the course of the ride. So what I mean by that is if you went out and did a nice flat ride, your average power and your normalized power would probably be very similar. But if you go out and do a very hilly ride with lots of short climbs that are gonna require big bursts of power to get up over, your normalized power, the physiological cost of that ride is going to be higher, but your average power may come in the same as that flat ride, if that makes sense. So what this means for a triathlete, if for instance, you know that you can hold 80% of your FTP for the race, the reality is that you can hold that on a flat course, but on a hilly course, you can actually hold what feels like feels like 80% of your FTP, in which case it means that you wanna be referring to your normalized power. And this is particularly important uh, 
for instance, at the start of a race, we want to make sure that you're not burning your matches and going far too hard from the off. So that's where you really would want to be focused on your normalized power to make sure you're not spiking up above that. Again, we have got a video on this over on the channel, so make sure you give that a little search and check that one out. Well, thanks again for all the questions you've sent in today. Um, please do keep them coming in using that hashtag GTN Coaches Corner. If you enjoyed today's video, please give it a thumbs up, give it a like, and don't forget to subscribe.